Hi, you guys. Michael Debye here. You know, I was in this band, The Power Station, and... The power! And I, I wanted to tell you about this new podcast. Now, we all know that there's a tremendous amount of podcasts, but this guy, Joe Kay, he really knows what he's talking about. Get it on, get it on, get it on. Welcome to the listeners, the new listeners, to Joe Kay's new podcast. The band was burnt out, the label didn't know what to do with them wasn't really promoting him and John just wasn't in a good way so like in 1971 the band split up in 1976 now along with quitting the band in 1976 John also quit drugs altogether and a lot of that rock and roll hedonism that he had absolutely been enjoying during his years with the band Steppenwolf was by and large not a sober group they had a couple of guys that didn't touch anything but uh they also had another couple of guys who got way too into drugs and alcohol, and John sort of straddled both groups. He was sort of a moderating factor, but he definitely did his fair share. But starting in 76, I think he turned 30 around here, him and his wife quit most of that and wanted to uh, basically spend time as a family raising their daughter. Unfortunately, this would be derailed after a couple of years because a combination of a series of bad investments with no work put John in pretty bad financial shape. He put out a solo album called All In Good Time in 1978. This album is definitely more rock and roll than his previous solo albums. I think he was hoping to get uh, some radio success, but that just didn't pan out. There's a song on here called Business is business. I do like that one, so I'll play a quick clip of that. Business is business. You've got to pay. Business is business. Can't get away. Business is business. Don't call me a crook. It's perfectly legal. I go by the book. Pretty much par for the course with what John and Steppenwolf have put out in the past, and this project did not improve John's financial status. So he was starting to feel the heat as the 70s was winding down to a close. Now to make matters worse, Steppenwolf would actually get back out on the road. Not John Kay's Steppenwolf, not the actual Steppenwolf, but at least one and as many as three bogus bands calling themselves Steppenwolf and playing Steppenwolf songs would form in 1979 and start to get booked in the venues that the actual Steppenwolf would play. Since this is way before the internet, I guess it was way easier to convince venues and promoters that you were the real deal. Now the story here is that as bad as John was doing financially, his ex-bandmates were doing much worse. And a couple of shady fly-by-night promoters convinced the ex-members of Steppenwolf to sign over their rights to the name to basically a cover group. This cover group would then claim to have rights to the name and play various venues. And because these were real shady practices, the guys in these bands were not reliable artists. And these bands would inevitably perform poorly and break contracts and in a very short amount of time these bogus bands effectively trashed Steppenwolf's reputation. Now John and another guy in Steppenwolf were absolutely furious uh, about these bands going out as Steppenwolf and of course uh, started legal action right away but because of how long the American justice system is, uh, his lawyers told him it would be quite a while before they would be able to get these other artists off the road. So in an effort to both run these other bands off the road and also work to restore Steppenwolf's reputation and legacy, John put a new lineup together and started going out on the road in 1980 as John Kay and Steppenwolf. 
and for several years he would tour what he calls the toilet venues <laughs> to slowly but surely repair the band's reputation and exert ownership over the band's name. To his credit, he took that anger and he turned it into determination. And he learned some very valuable lessons about perseverance and humility during these struggles in the early 80s. And he would then take those lessons and apply them to records we'll talk about in a little bit and really get some great music out of it. And this was a strategy that worked. And given that these fake, bogus Steppenwolf bands were made up of shady fly-by-night guys, they inevitably broke contracts and put on really bad performances and word about them being fake got out and the law caught up to them and legally they were eventually all barred from performing in that way and John eventually got full rights to the name Steppenwolf. But it would take him a very long time to get his version of Steppenwolf out of the lousy small venues and back onto the big stages that he was used to. Nothing has changed since I left school behind. The bullies now just wear suits and tang. They buy you lunch to get that dollar from you. And then they lay the bubble jump on you. I've been through an awful lot decades of playing rock and roll music and Joe Kay is a wonderful addition to the fabulous world and spectacular world of rock and roll. Business is 